creates opportunity for everyone. Uh, and I want to finish this with um, a discussion about this weekend. You spoke at the uh, at an event for the hosted by the Texas Tribune, uh, and you sat on a panel, and that panel talked about a lot of different issues. One of the issues that came up, though, I thought was pretty interesting, and specifically as it relates to El Paso, and that is the discussion about what's happening in Juarez, the violence that's going on over there, how it relates to the drug trade. I wanted to get your thoughts on that, Congressman. Well, you know, first and foremost, I've never used any illegal drugs. Uh, I grew up around them. Uh, Canutillo, there was marijuana all around. But uh, my upbringing uh, that was instilled in me by my father and my mother uh, was uh, enough to make me want to stay away uh, from drugs. And so I don't believe that uh, making uh, drugs legal is the answer. Am I willing to debate that? You bet. My background as a, as a law enforcement officer uh, uh, and as a father and as a grandfather uh, and as someone that hears from parents who are very concerned uh, that uh, uh, the roles that, that we play in their lives, that is, children look up to us. And if we have advocate for legalization, uh, narcotics and, and drugs, uh, they, they're very uh, concerned about those kinds of things. We should be, we should be role models in a positive way, uh, not, not take the easy way out. And that's why I'm opposed to legalization of, of drugs. Can we make, can we have a debate? Uh, can we have a discussion? You bet. Uh, but uh, we don't want to go down the road that other countries have uh, that have uh, uh, destroyed uh, and created such a such a huge uh, impact on the social programs. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, uh, information and a lot of data that uh, we can look at. Uh, but as for me, I'm going to continue uh, to fight against legalization of drugs. Um, are we doing enough in Juarez, or, or, or enough to influence what's happening in Juarez in a positive way to stop what's happening just across the board? Well, you know, I get from time to time people that that want me to send the Marines into Juarez. That's a that's a sovereign country. Having said that, there's a lot we're doing. I mean, in the area of intelligence, uh, in the area of training, in the area of equipment. Uh, in the area of support, uh, we've done a lot. That's what the Merida Initiative was all about. That's why I was consulted about what are the what, what should be the priorities as we look at spending uh, not millions but over a billion dollars in helping uh, Mexico. The one thing that I want to make clear is that we've never given Mexico a dime in money. It's all been uh, funded by the Merida Initiative, uh, by way of training, by way of equipment, uh, by way of intelligence, uh, by way of vetting both the military and the police uh, uh, agencies. We are also paying for the uh, changing of a, of a legal system under, under the Amparo uh, basis in, in Mexico uh, to one that is not identical to ours, but it but it mirrors uh, ours uh, uh, much closer. So there's a lot we, we, we've done. These guys, the the cartels, the criminal gangs, uh, are fighting for their for their livelihood. Uh, they're vicious. Uh, they've killed uh, almost forty thousand uh, people in in Mexico. Uh, but we've also been very successful in taking out uh, uh, the, the heads of uh, some of the cartels. We're looking for the others. And as we're doing all this, we're also training uh, the, the Mexican military and the Mexican police forces uh, to be able to carry out their own, uh, their own operations. That's, that's the, the, the way that uh, that's going to 
come to a conclusion in terms of the violence and the cartel control that uh, has has had uh, uh, this this violence impact Mexico. Um, it would be helpful if the governor wouldn't feed the the flames of uh, calling the border out of control, chaotic, spillover violence, and all those kinds of things, because the governor simply doesn't know what he's talking about. And even when we've uh, sent him the data and the information, he ignores it because he wants to peddle fear. Uh, we deserve better uh, along uh, the border. Border communities uh, are impacted by that kind of rhetoric uh, because our econ economic devel development capability uh, is, is affected. Uh, but uh, we've done every possible thing uh, that we could think of. Uh, and uh, I think we're seeing seeing some progress. Okay, Congressman. Uh, my final question is, <clears throat> what message would you give to uh, potential voters uh, as they make their decision for who they want to be the Democratic nominee uh, for this congressional district? Well, first of all, uh, I'm proud to run every two years. Uh, people that advocate term limits forget that every two years you've got to make a case uh, to the voters. Uh, whether or not uh, they should re-elect you. Uh, I would just ask simply, look at my track record. Look at who I am and what I represent. Uh, I'm a middle class uh, person, uh, a father, a grandfather, who's got the best interest of his children and his grandchildren, of your children and your grandchildren. Uh, I think uh, no one has worked harder than I have. Uh, no one has uh, the best interest of this community uh, at heart more than I do because I live here. Uh, I'm going to come back uh, and live here uh, and I probably will be buried here. But uh, uh, when, you, when you look at uh, why someone would want uh, to make a case uh, for their vote, uh, it's not because it's time for a change. It should be because uh, they have a vision, they have uh, a strategy, and they have to convince the voter that they can make it happen. I have had a vision. I have had those three priorities, the border, national security, and education, consistently throughout my time in, in Congress. I'm going to continue to work on those uh, uh, priorities. But most of all, I have a track record. I have a track record that I'm proud of. Uh, we haven't finished uh, everything that uh, I have started, but it's not about me. It's about us. It's about we. Uh, and I think that uh, if the voter looks at uh, and compares, uh, I hope they they will uh, continue to give me the greatest honor I've ever had, and that's to serve the people in the 16th District. Congressman, thank you for your time. Thank you.